Okay, now that we have introduced the cellular players and we have talked about the general theme of uh, humoral versus cellular immunity, we'll talk about some of the relationships between the cells. Uh, the uh, generally first thing to happen in uh, the cellular realm of immunity is for the antigens to run to cells. You could call them macrophages. You could call them dendritic if they just happen to be shaped uh, in a spinous method. They make contact with the pathogen or foreign antigen. It may be a self antigen if it's an autoimmune disease, and then present it to the T cells, which are the master controller um, lymphocytes. Uh, it could be the CD4 regulators which are the helper T-cell lymphocytes, which go through a variety of schemes in perhaps cytokine secretion, uh, or perhaps the CD8 effector cells, which have more of a direct and less of a controlling influence on CD8 movement. On the other hand, uh, B cells may be triggered off to form plasma cells which will then start to create antibodies, ultimately, um, as a result, originally from antigens to run to cells, coming in contact with the antigens, which are now produced and will enter uh, plasma cell antibody factories. In addition, uh, there may be a direct uh, killing effect or lysis effect of the cell or the surfaces from which the antigen is present by virtue of the MK uh, lymphocytes as well. We talked about cytokines a lot and inflammation and regeneration, and no doubt it's all tied in with this as well. The cytokines involved, uh, there's a wide variety of them, large families, many different types, perhaps hundreds. Uh, they mediate uh, innate immunity. We uh, introduce in families, tumor necrosis factors, interferon, the cytokines also generically regulate lymphocyte growth and differentiation, uh, especially the interleukin. And as we saw with inflammation, they also completely uh, mediate the inflammatory cell activity as well, uh, very much tied in with the immune process. And uh, they may also stimulate uh, hematopoiesis, for example, colony stimulating factors uh, could very easily and as a rule, cause the proliferation of uh, white cells, particularly granular sites. Um, the same analogy that erythropoiesis may stimulate uh, and differentiate uh, the red cell, uh, red cell formation. Um, like the cytokines, uh, as well as the chemokines we studied before, they are all uh, polypeptides, large polypeptides, small cells, produced by many cells. Uh, usually lymphocytes and macrophages have a wide variety of roles. And it's not my purpose here to go through the big list to confuse you or confuse myself. My purpose is to let you know is that the two uh, most often mentioned and controlling cytokines are the tumor necrosis factors or TNF uh, alpha and beta or treachery alpha and the interleukins of which interleukin 1 was the first discovered and probably most clinically important. These not only uh, regulate the immune process, but they regulate other cytokines as well. Uh, if you want to differentiate a cytokine from a chemokine, there is a slight point of differentiation. Remember, the chemokines are basically uh, small proteins which are attracted towards uh, the nucleosides. They're generally a little smaller than the cytokines, and their primary is to attract the nucleosides. Uh, we can't talk about immunity now unless you talk about MHC, the major perturbance compatibility complex. This is something that is of immense importance, and I will try to summarize it by telling you the MHC is a place on chromosome 6 and it's placed for all cell surface compatibility. So when your immune cells uh, have to recognize pathogens 
that he sent them to kill the calf versus recognizing your surface of yourselves as being something, your own selves, which is something they shouldn't accept, but that determines ultimately how you come to see. So the human leukocyte antigens or the HRA system and the HP system in mice are basically uh, antigens on the surface, all ultimately coded by that uh, relatively small area that we call the membrane. The overall job of the MHC is to make sure all self cell antigens are recognized and tolerated. And the general rule is that if they are not the known, recognized, and tolerated antigens, then they will be attacked. And that's the same way it works. Of course, if something fails, if the MHC fails, then it attacks uh, things that shouldn't be attacked. That's what we call the factory of Parker immune diseases. Uh, MHC molecules uh, generally divide into three different types. The one we talked about is protein uh, antigens on surfaces of almost all nucleic cells, including platelets, and these are uh, MHC type 1 molecules. Type 2 molecules are uh, chiefly on the antigen preventing cells, like the macrophages and histiocytes, if you will, whether they're dendritic or not, as well as some lymphocytes, and they are uh, the antigen uh, or the immune cell expression of the MHC molecules. The uh, complement system proteins are considered the third class and they are not cell surface at all. They are involved in the cascade of complement uh, 20 or so factors which will ultimately result in the lysis of the cell membrane. So it's just nice to remember there's three classes of categories of MHC proteins. Let's talk about what do they generally want when they do these attacks. Well, the first thing we'll talk about is the so-called classic four hypersensitivity reactions. Then we'll talk about the failure of the body to recognize its own antigens as tolerable when they go after it, so-called autoimmune diseases formerly called collagen diseases in many respects, which is a perfectly legitimate and not reason to attack. And we'll talk about the uh, both the primary or the genetic as well as the secondary or acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Uh, and this is a good case, it's a great case, where you get a pretty hypersensitivity reaction. 